Good morning, members and friends of New Bethel Presbyterian Church. My name is Rick Bredemeyer, and along with my wife, Sherry, we welcome you to our services as we light the candle of the fourth Sunday of Advent. Please join me now for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, the whole meaning of Christmas can be explained in one little four-letter word, love. You send your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love descended from heaven to be born of a virgin. Love lay in the scratchy hay of a manger in the meager barn in Bethlehem. All of your love, God, was robed in the delicate skin of a baby and wrapped in swaddling clothes. This final week of Advent, help us to reflect on the magnitude of love that was made manifest in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to send your Son. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. During the season of Advent, a time of waiting for the fullness of God to be revealed in the birth of Jesus the Christ, we light the candles of the Advent wreath as a sign that God's kingdom is coming into the world. So far, we have lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. The candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. And the candle of joy, rejoicing in the good news that comes with justice. This week, we light the candle of love. Scripture tells us, there is no fear in love, for perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. God created this world in love, and this world will end in the love of God. God's love pervades all aspects of, his, of this life, from birth to death, pain to delight, strangers and more. God's love is there. After we accept God's love and seek to share it with others, Christ comes into our world once again. We may be willing to wait for a lot of things, but we will not let wait for a chance to share love. The world needs love. We need love. So today we light the candle of love to remind us to spread love wherever we go. May we be courageous enough to love our neighbors as ourselves. We light the first candle of hope. Now we light the candle for peace. We light the third candle of joy. And now we light this candle with love. Let us pray. God, you enter our lives and call to us to be open to hearing the cries of people who feel lost and alienated, who feel that no one cares or ever care will care about them. Help us practice love in action with family, friends, and strangers as we seek to learn to love unconditionally and share your love with others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Sherry and Rick, for getting our service off to a very good start this morning. We do have a few announcements for this week. As always, we want to remember those that are on our prayer list. We especially want to remember the Painter family today in our prayers with the passing of Shelby Friday morning. Shelby and Phyllis, along with their three sons, Zane, John, and Jason, were very dedicated longtime members of New Bethel. And the footprints that this family has left are all around this church. Our deepest sympathies go out to all members of the Painter family. Christmas Eve has traditionally been a time of gathering and a special service here at New Bethel. Unfortunately, we will not be having a live communion service this year, but we will be recording our service early this week and we'll have it posted on our YouTube channel the afternoon of Christmas Eve. In addition to the communion service and a short sermon, we will have the lighting of the Christ candle and some very special music. 
Please join us at your convenience for this special service. If you want to do the communion service along with the broadcast, we will have the communion cups that uh, some of you are familiar with. We will put them in, uh, in plastic bags and we will put them out on the side porch. There is a pickup basket there. So we will place those out there on Thursday morning uh, it's Christmas Eve morning if you want to come by the church sometime during the day. And then when uh, you watch the service, you can participate in the communion along with, uh, along with the service as it goes. So, thank you. I want to remind all the session members that we will have our monthly meeting tonight at 6 p.m. This will again be a Zoom meeting. And session members, if you haven't seen your Zoom invitation, please let me know. Celebrating birthdays this week are Bill Snap on December the 20th and Gary Sweeney on December 21st. So we wish both of these gentlemen very, very happy birthdays. Now here in front of me, I have the pledge cards that y'all have sent in. We have a good number of pledge cards right here and I wanna thank uh, each and every one of you for sending in this, the, the pledge, the cards and making this pledge for, for 2021. This will be very helpful when the session uh, goes over the budget uh, tonight and it will help us as we uh, move along during the year. We now have a prayer of dedication to dedicate the pledge cards as well as the gifts that have been given for the joy offering. So please pray, pray with me now. now. Our dear Heavenly Father, Father, we thank, thank you, you for Father. all those who faithfully support the work of your church in so many ways. We know that every gift we have comes from you and we are to be cheerful givers when it comes to sharing our talents and our financial gifts for the advancement of your kingdom. We thank you for those who have pledged to financially support the New Bethel ministry in the coming year. We remember those who will receive the benefits of our joy offering to help those who have spent their lives in your service and to those preparing themselves for a lifetime of dedicated Christian service. We dedicate these pledges and our gifts to your service and pray that all we give will be to your honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We invite you now to a short time of reflective prayer, seeking the Holy Spirit in your own personal time of worship. Amen. to worship. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for the Mighty One has done great deeds, and holy is God's name. Let us pray. Mighty God, your faithfulness is magnified in the coming of your Son, in the long-awaited birth of the promised Messiah. May we, like Mary, Proclaim your greatness as we rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
let us now confess our sins to the one whose mercy endures from generation to generation as we join in our prayer of confession. Faithful God, we know that you are always there to guide us, yet we often make plans without listening to you and discover that our human agendas can drown out our ability to hear your will for us. We repent of these faults and turn to you in love. Forgive our offenses and pardon our sins, that our lives may magnify your holy name forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, by the faith of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Blessed be the God of our salvation, whose mercy is everlasting. Our special music today features the choir and the congregation of New Bethel as everyone joined in a medley of favorite Christmas carols performed during the 2015 Christmas Cantata. <laughs>
and Bethel. Welcome to the fourth week of Advent. I hope that your Advent season has been bright and cheery. I know that uh, for many of us, uh, we are going through some really interesting times of our lives there and, and sometimes getting out and getting around other people or doing the things that we would normally do on this uh, Christmas season uh, has been changed in many ways. But I hope the Lord is blessing your heart and helping you to continue to find ways to enjoy the life, the season, and the reason that we come and celebrate together as Christians the birth of Christ. So now as we enter into the house, shall we enter our hearts and our minds to the Lord with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this past week. Thank you for all that you have given us, for all the love you have shown us, for the gifts that you have given us. Father, as we enter into this hour, allow us to unite as one in mind and body, heart and soul, that we may come together to lift up our hearts, to worship, and to celebrate the word that you share with us, the spirit which is within us as the gift that your son has given us, so that we might not only learn from the wisdom that is written in our text today, but that we delight in it and live and be a part of it. Father, we pray for the men and women of this church, for all those who are in struggles or suffering. We pray for those who have lost loved ones this week. We ask that your spirit guide them and protect them and get them through this tough time. Father, as we enter into the week in which we celebrate your son's birth, help us all to be enlightened, to be a part of the light of your son upon the journey and the path of many, whether it be family or friends or just someone in our community that we connect with. Allow us to let your face shine upon them through us, that they might hear the word, that they might understand the joy, the hope, the love that you provide for each of us. We pray this now in Christ's name. Amen. Our first scriptural reading this morning, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, and then verse 16. God's promise to David. Shall we hear? After the king was settled in his place, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan, the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I have commanded to shepherd my people Israel. Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, 
This is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastures, from tending the flocks, and appointed you a ruler over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies. From before you, now I will make your name great, like the name of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time that I have appointed leaders over my people, Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Our second lesson this morning comes out of the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 47 through 55. This, of course, is the song from Mary. Shall we hear the words? My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extended to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he had promised our ancestors. Thus ends the reading of the scripture this day. Imagine what a gift it would be For the Lord to come and to speak to you and say, I am going to make you among the greatest of greatest of all man in the world. And that's exactly what God said to Nathan to tell David, who would come to be King David. Not the greatest in so many of the things that we read about that God perhaps wanted David to do, but in name only, David will forever be entwined in the concept and the knowledge and the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his birth. Then shall we jump to Mary. Again, what a beautiful gift to be given among all the women of that time. Imagine a poor servant, a person who would probably not be noticed by very many at all. Someone who, if a leader had been asked, 
would not even know the name Mary. And yet God picks this lowly servant, a woman, to be the bearer of the greatest gift this world's ever received. And she says, I will be called blessed. Not the mother of the world, not the mother of salvation, not the mother of all of Christianity. We could talk about so many great things that could be included into this song because you must imagine what an enormous, enormous gift this was for God to give to this lady a chance to come out of the darkness into the light, a chance to go from being just your average, normal, everyday woman to one where the world says you were blessed. But here she is, singing a song. And in that song, there's some very interesting stuff that she tells us. For one, she says, the world has changed. Nothing will ever be the same. Everything that they knew before the birth of Christ will be turned upside down. She says, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of a humble servant, state of his servant. For the mighty one has done great things for me. His holy name, his holy name, his mercy extends to those who fear him. Now, here's a promise that Mary's talking about that extends to those who fear him. So we have to turn for a second. We have to think about God, his power and his strength and his ability, who he is, what he's offering, And we kind of have to bring it down just a little bit so that we can actually perceive the greatness within the words. Because it's not about fear as in God will destroy us today, but as in understanding his awesome and mighty power his capabilities. In an instant, God could say, nope, and get out his eraser and everything's gone. In an instant, he could start all over again with creation. But God didn't do that. God doesn't want to do that. God is in love with humanity, with his creation. It doesn't matter what we as children do or stumble or trip over or insult or create. He still brings mercy, as she says, extended to them. It's not an instant flash of light and they're gone. Mercy, grace, love. But imagine, let's go back one more time, back into time, and set this a little more into stone because... As it is said, we know that the scripture says that Mary being of the lineage of David. 
And so we have King David, who was not yet king, but was told by Nathan that God said, come out of the fields, quit serving and taking care of the sheep, a lowly servant out in the fields doing what shepherds will do, and take my people and lead them, and build not only a name for himself, but a house for the Lord. Now we know that David's monarch, uh, his, his leadership, so to speak, collapsed 400 years later, and there was no real rigid political aspirations beyond that point that was entwined in what David set up. But David did a good job. David was a leader of God's children, and he created a powerhouse, one that was capable of dealing with the Romans, one that was strong enough to help his people be more comfortable in place and build their own nation. So militarily, politically, and even humanly, David worked. But we know that the ark was not actually placed in a house until his son Solomon. So when I say that the scripture talking about and what God offers to David is in name only. David's name only is entwined within the matrix of what we talk about as Mary has her child, as Christ is born, lives, and becomes the human leader within Israel, but not the one that was expected, not the one that had the matrix, the monarchy blood behind him, the concept in which God approved and supported, but no, a young man walking and doing things totally different. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. That's what God had done, but not what Jesus did. He extended mercy for generations to generations. That is the beginning of what Jesus could do. He has filled the hungry with good things. We begin to hear the transition. Monarchies were about collecting taxes, building up more power, more politics, being stronger, setting rules, making people live within the guidelines, being in control, being powerful. Jesus was about healing and nurturing, providing for those who were hungry, hunger in different ways, because as you can recall, the scripture talks about Jesus traveling and the people following him, sometimes to the point of burden where they would have to feed the people and didn't have the ability to do it. And God had to allow his son to do a miracle. We listen to all this. We understand the realm of all of this, our world. And yet, 
when we look at the scripture, when we look at the song that Mary is talking about, she realizes I'm the weakest of weakest of links in the chain of events that changes the world, that turns it upside down, that brings a savior into the world, one that we celebrate, that brings not power and military strengths that we're used to, not rules and regulations, not political aspirations, but love and mercy and grace and hope and peace. Through the strangest of words, fear. A theology that is turned upside down where the dead move to the living where the journey of darkness is able to move into the light, where life is not necessarily the existence here on earth, but eternal with our God, made possible through his grace, made possible through the love that he gave us from his only son. A son, a savior. We know the history, we know the words and scripture, we know how he was born, we know how humble, we understand the swaddling cloths. There's no image of great power. There's no image of strength and ability. In fact, Mary is the one that asked Jesus to perform his first miracle. He didn't do it himself. He was asked by a woman, which in the world of men at that time was another beginning of turning things upside down. God has changed everything from the night that Mary gave birth. Life in the darkness and death ended for all who understand and believe in the journey and the promise. He has filled the hungry with good things. Oh yeah, he can send off the rich with emptiness. He can scatter great kings throughout the world, tearing down their power, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever. That is God. That is who he is. Merciful, loving, filled with grace. I hope this week, as you continue your journey, that you allow yourself to look back in the mirror of this year, the, one of the most trying years perhaps for any of us and see how God worked for you. Look at how he might have been involved in your life, how he changed your path, how he varied your journey, how life could have been different had you done something or had you not done something because God is at work in our life every day. And he continues to work with us. We may not always see it. We may not always recognize it. But he is very merciful. And he does continue to feed and fill us and provide as he has promised. I hope you have time 
to look at your past journey and prepare for the next journey in 2021. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we enter into this week of celebration of the birth of your Son, as we close in on the end of our annual year, Father, allow us to step back a moment and realize the blessings, the gifts, the love that you have shown us, the preparations that you have made for us. Father, as we prepare for this journey this week in time, being around family and friends, talking to those about Christ and the birth. Allow us, if it be your will, to be the light and the blessing to that discussion so that all may know and understand and come to believe in the death and the salvation your son provided as a gift to us and new hope in lives through the promise that God made. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now as we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you. And may he find favor and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.